Chapter 17 introduces us to sound wave. Now, sound, what is sound? Uh, basically, sound is a pressure wave. So you drop something heavy, it hits the ground, and it squeezes air out. So this compressed air then makes waves of, of compressed and rarefied air that go, that'll go, go across. And then when it hits your ear, it funnels in inside your ear, down your eardrum, where it hits the, or the, down the ear canal, hits the eardrum, eardrum goes back and forth, causes little bones in here to go back and forth, which pushes a uh, membrane back and forth, which causes fluid to go slosh, slosh, slosh. It actually sets up standing waves in your, in your ear, and the little cilia wiggle, 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 produce electrical impulses, go to your brain, sound okay so that's that sound now there are limits here uh uh in that these these parts can only vibrate so fast so that means that there's an upper limit to sound and that is defined to be roughly 20 kilohertz uh, uh frequencies higher than that you cannot hear there's also a lower limit and so, uh, uh, because a as the bones and, and, and membranes move back and forth, if they're moving too slow, they actually don't don't really produce any any, any very much motion of the material and, and, and the fluid in the inner ear doesn't move around much, and uh, you don't get standing waves because they're actually too long uh, to fit in there. And so, the lowest frequency you can hear is about twenty hertz. So though that range, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, is referred to as the sonic range. Okay, so these are sound frequencies. Um, if you are less than 20, uh, so less than 20 hertz, then that's called infrasonic. If you're greater than 20 kilohertz, then that's called ultrasonic. Okay, now... You humans hear roughly 20 to 20 kilohertz. Um, there are other creatures that hear other frequencies. For example, uh, rhinoceroses can actually hear uh, uh, much lower frequencies than you can hear. In fact, they, they grunt at about 12 hertz. And so to you, it doesn't even sound like sound. If you were close enough to them to hear anything, it might just sound like they're exhaling or something. Uh, but they're actually making making uh, vocalizations that other rhinoceroses understand. Okay, and uh, um, and then higher than twenty kilohertz. Again, dogs are famous for hearing very high frequencies. Uh, so dog whistle, you blow a dog whistle, dogs hear it. Humans can't. Uh, there's also places in the country, you know, other places, parts of the country where they've got a lot of deer that are on the highways. Uh, uh, some of the people that drive in those areas, uh, back roads at night a lot, uh, rather than hitting a deer and totaling their car, uh, they have little whistles they actually can put on the car. And the whistles make this ultrasonic whine as the car is driving down the highway that humans can't hear, but deer can hear and they'll jump out of the road. Uh, probably causes all the dogs to go go howling as the car goes by too, but uh, uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, now, I should also point out that this is a convenient definition, round numbers. So not everybody can hear the exact same range. So some people, you know, can't quite hear, you know, some people might be able to hear 19 hertz. Some might not hear below 21 hertz or something like that. 20 kilohertz, you're not likely to find anyone that hears above 20 kilohertz, uh, though possibly, you know, young children can sometimes hear a little bit higher frequencies. Um, but it is known the older you get, you start dropping this upper part of the boundary right here. And so there are tones up around uh, 20 kilohertz, uh, high, high teen kilohertz, 19, uh, uh, 19 point something kilohertz that uh, young adults can hear and older people can't. Uh, teenagers can hear some tones up there that even young adults can't hear. And so, so, you know, over time, you start losing the high frequencies up here particularly. And so that's the sonic range, right? Uh, speed of sound. 
uh, um, you know, how, how, how does this work? Well, you got you got to compress and then rarefy, compress, rarefy, compress, rarefy, compress. So the air, you can like, you know, you can you can imagine graphing this. It's a wave, okay. And so we know that a wave on a string, the speed of the wave on a string was square root f over mu. Well, it works a little bit different in in uh, 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 works a little bit different in uh, um, sound because you're squeezing and compressing air. Okay, and so the F would stretch and squeeze a a uh, string. So you're talking about the tension there. This is mass per length right here. Okay, and so if you imagine uh, uh, this thing right here, if you divide both top and bottom by area, you have F over A and mu over A. Well, mu over A, mass per length divided by area, that's like density. Okay. And so that means that, that now we've got something kind of like just, just uh, uh, regular density. Force per area, you know, is uh, you know, Young's modulus times change in length over length. Or in bulk modulus, then that would be the bulk modulus change in volume over volume. Okay. And so the F over A up here, particularly when you have these volumes in here, that's going to be kind of like a bulk mo related to the bulk modulus here. Okay. Uh, um, so uh, what happens is the speed of sound in the air uh, uh, can be thought of as defined by bulk modulus or the speed of sound, you know, in period uh, uh, through solid, liquid, or whatever, bulk modulus uh, divided by density. Okay. The higher the density, then, then uh, uh, the slower the speed. So that means that the speed of sound would actually change, uh, for example, in air, depending on the density of the air. So different altitudes are going to be different. Um, bulk modulus is highly dependent on the material. Uh, bulk modulus, for example, it takes an enormous amount of pressure to squeeze steel uh, compared to uh, rubber. So speed of sound in steel is going to be much, much higher than the speed of sound in rubber. Uh, it's harder to squeeze water than it is air, so speed of sound in water is higher than the speed of sound in air. Uh, an experiment you can do is, is stick your head in a swimming pool uh, so that one ear is below the water surface, one ear is above the water surface, have a friend slap water on the other end of the pool. You'll hear it in the ear underwater a fraction of a second before you hear it in the air that's above water because air the speed of sound travels faster in water than it does in air. Uh, you can approximate the speed of sound in air. Uh, a very good approximation is going to be uh, 331.3 meters per second times the square root of 1 plus t over 273.15 uh, 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 where t is the temperature. Uh, and that's a very good approximation of the speed of sound in air uh, at sea level, okay, uh, uh, um, um, does not take into account the difference at, at, at altitude. Uh, if you do a Taylor series expansion of that, okay, and this keep the first couple of terms, you end up with 331 uh, uh, meters per second um, plus... Uh, um, uh, 0.606 uh, meters per second, um, meters per second Celsius degree times degree Celsius. Okay, so times the temperature. Okay, so times the temperature in Celsius. Okay. And so if you do that, then you would see that, for example, at zero Celsius, speed of sound is close to 340, uh, 331 meters per second. 
um, at 20 degrees Celsius, it's closer to 330, uh, uh, 342, and, and so forth. And so uh, uh, you, you end up with the speed being different. Uh, uh, at room temperature, uh, speed of sound is about 342 meters per second. On a hot day, it's a little bit higher. On a cool day, it's a little bit lower. Uh, uh, so that's, that's just, you know, it's not a constant number the way that some of these other things we talk about are.